Good afternoon, everyone. I'm glad to see you uh, all this afternoon. This is the very first ELA uh, après cours. Hopefully, not our uh, one and only. I am looking forward to others, uh, at least another one, and then uh, we will see uh, from there. Uh, my my goal today is to reach out to you to find out what your needs are. Uh, and whatever they are, they could be needs for material, for assistance, uh, for uh, evaluations, pre-tests, whatever it is, uh, we're going to talk about that. And this is essentially what the goal is today, is for everybody to, uh, to share uh, their uh, concerns, questions, and to start the year, although it's a little bit late, it's November, but uh, to start the year on the best foot possible. So uh, on behalf of myself, Julie Robitaille, uh, Equipe Choc Pedagogical, and Micheline Amar, my counterpart for science and mathematics, I wish to welcome you to our first ELA après cours. So the first thing I would like to do, if we look at the meeting agenda, uh, I want to present the partners that have uh, that are here with us this afternoon, or that could not make it to the actual meeting, but are still working very hard uh, with us, Equipe uh, Shot, so that we can give you as uh, as uh, many different things as you, as we can, as far as your needs are, and catering to them. So whether they are from EPC, the Pedagogical Consultant Team, from BIM, uh, RECI. Uh, which is all the digital help that we can get. Service Indicative uh, Complementaire, Equipe Choc, uh, PN, les PNI uh, from the First Nation. Uh, any other partner that I may be forgetting, remember that we're all working towards the same goal. It is to help you and guide you and assist you as much as we can in, uh, in your job, your everyday. Uh, work as an English teacher. If you do not mind, I would love for uh, everybody to take a few seconds to, uh, to uh, introduce themselves uh, so that everybody knows who you are, uh, what your function is, and where you're from, if you don't mind. So Richard, I'm going to let you guide the, uh, the presentation, and here we go. Pour l'instant, il n'y a personne qui lève la main. Je peux quand même vous nommer un après l'autre. Donc, on va y aller avec Diane en commençant. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Diane Balthazar. I work at uh, German Institution, Pintancy de, de Drummondville. Um, I teach English as a second language and English as a first language. I teach all levels from pre-secondary to secondary five. And... Um, I've been there for seven years. I'm the only English teacher at the penitentiary and I'm always alone. Oh. So I feel I'm a very, very lonely person. Well, you're and, not alone. Yeah, but yes, but um, technologies don't get to the, the penitentiary. So I'm isolated in the, in the technological way as well. So we have no internet in the classroom and um, <clears throat> we have, lots of things that are blocked on the internet in the teacher's room so anything that we create we cannot create at at the institution we have to go home and do it thank you very much thank i'm very you. happy to be here thank you diane emily hi i my name is emily Bowles. i am a member of the hasty team along with my colleague joanne giovanna who is here um so we are <laughs> we are the techies, I suppose, along with Richard. Uh, so we help um, everybody, every, every teacher who wants to work with us to integrate tech into your practice in whatever ways that you can. Thank you, Emily. Frank, the voice. The voice. Well, thank you, Richard, for that lovely introduction. And I should have been paying attention to the agenda. I would have raised my hand up and seen that EPC is uh, first there in brackets. So I'm Frank Fafaro. I'm a head consultant for the English Montreal School Board and also part of a group called English Pedagogical Consultants, so the EPC group. 
who uh, we have a couple of the of my colleagues here today. I think Gail Gagnon is here at uh, somewhere, and uh, my function at the board is to support teachers in pretty much all the subject areas, but uh, ELA and uh, ELI being the one I'm most focused on. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, collaborating with all of you in the months and years to come to make sure this is up and running and to make our program as rich and varied as it possibly can be. Thank you, Frank. Uh, Gail. Hi, everyone. Uh, as Frank said, I'm also with the English Ped Consultant Group. I'm a Ped Consultant at Place Cartier Adult Center. I've taught the all of the ELI and ELA programs in the past. I really feel for you, Diane, and your situation. Uh, now working with tech is kind of unfathomable. Um, so I'm really looking forward to hearing uh, what you have to say and others have to say and you know how we can help you too and other teachers who are here. Thank you, Gail. Giovanna. Hello, I'm Giovanna, also known as Joanne. So um, as my uh, colleague Emily so eloquent, eloquently stated, we're the techies, we're C, I uh, work out of the English Montreal School Board and my function is primarily center support. Um, and when I'm not doing that, it's a lot of behind the scenes center support working with the various partners. So I'm happy to be here and um, hoping to support any way I can. Thank you, Joanna. Gwen, are you able to talk to us? Yeah. So hi, everyone. My name is Gwen Galvin Goujon. I teach at the Adult Ed in Sherbrooke, so at New Horizons. This year, I have a variety of courses online from SEC 1 to SEC 3. So that's my challenge this year is the resources for all those wonderful levels. Thank you, Gwen. And uh, Nancy now. Hi, um, I teach in the Pontiac Continuing Education Centre in Chauvel. I teach a variety of subjects from English to options to history and social sciences from pre-secondary to level five. So <laughs> I'm open to any suggestions. I'm, I feel like I'm a bit like a squirrel, trying to squirrel away resources. Thank you, Nancy. And uh, Naomi. Hi, my name is Naomi Terrier. I'm part of the EPC group uh, like Gael and Frank. Um, I'm the pet consultant for the Sir Wilfrid Lohi School Board. Uh, and I'm here today with uh, one of our teachers, Vidya. So it's so nice to see you and uh, I can't wait to collaborate. Thank you very much. Sarah now, it will go with um... It's Steven and come back to you. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Steven Jansma. I uh, work with uh, BIM and um, I'm relatively new uh, working at BIM um, and also relatively new having the, uh, the, the, the file of the dossier for um, ELA. Um, previously, uh, my counterpart, uh, Susan Oliver, had uh, the uh, the, the dossier for ELA uh, for the adult sector, and she's uh, she's actually no longer with uh, BIM. She she went on to to work at a at an adult center, um, I think in the West Island. Um, so I've been at BIM now for a couple of years, and um, I Richard um, I, I worked in Saguenay for quite a while um, as an English teacher, and then um, as a CP. Uh, for the school board there, the Rive du Saguenay. So uh, I'm not sure where you are, if you're in Alma or if you're in uh, Dolbo, uh, but uh, in any case, we're, we were neighbors at one point. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm originally from Nova Scotia, Canada, although I've lived in Quebec for about 28 years now and in Montreal for three. And um, yeah, it's, it's my pleasure to be here. I received the invitation from Julie to be present and uh, she reached out to me um, uh, uh, several months ago and we, 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 we talked a, a little bit. She invited me to the meeting and um, 
So I look forward to um, future collaborations um, with, uh, if possible, with, uh, with folks in the adult sector. So thanks very much for having me and uh, I'll pass it back to you, Richard. Thank you, Stephen. I was born in Lake Saint-Jean, but now I live in the uh, Outaouais region. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, <laughs> cool. Okay. Sarah, uh, are you ready? My name is Tatiana Esperant, and I work for the Valdor Adult Education Center um, with the Western Quebec School Board. I teach English all levels, starting in pre-sec up to level five. Um, I work for a very small center. We have an average of like uh, 12 to 15 students, different levels, and uh, most of them are, are of an indigenous background. So I'm happy to be here to collaborate and to find more resources for my wonderful students. <laughs> Hi. Um, yep, I'm, um, so I'm Verda and I work with at the Hall Adult Education Center, uh, also with the Western Quebec School Board. And I teach the literacy class here, which is a pre-secondary class. So that's uh, what I do. Yep. Thank you. Okay, so Julie, back to you. Um, I don't think that we heard from Vidya. Did we? Oh, well, um, Naomi mentioned that I work with her. Right? I teach uh, secondary English one, two, and three level. And um, at the CEC BMO Adult Education Center with the school board. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Nice to see all of you. All right. So, um, as you can see on the agenda, we're now ready for Likip uh, Shak pedagogical mandate. And I'm also going to present our website and newsletter. And then we will go into a guided discussion about uh, your needs, concerns, questions, and so on for this year. I apologize. I always refer to ELA, ELI together, and somehow I forgot it in my title, uh, my title slide. So I apologize for it. I believe I have not forgotten it in the invitation, however, so hopefully uh, all is well, but I do, uh, I do take care of uh, everything and anything in between pre-secondary and then all the way up to secondary five, of course. So um, L'Equipe Chuck has a mandate, which is a, uh, we are the, uh, the ones to accompany or to assist. And the way that we do this is we make sure that uh, we are in contact with your uh, pedagogical consultants, center directors, yourselves more specifically, sometimes very directly to you. And our help goes from implementation of new material, new, uh, new uh, programs that may have uh, uh, that may be brand new to uh, either to your practice or to the curriculum altogether. We also assist in the development of resources and uh, to a lesser extent, but nonetheless, we, uh, we do a company uh, in terms of evaluation. So we can help with the production of evaluation tools, uh, expanding on evaluation tools that you may have already. Uh, and we try to facilitate and make sure that information goes out to all our partners and that everything that happens that is brand new or that has an impact on ELI or ELA is communicated to you uh, through your pedagogical consultants or your center directors. So that's pretty much our mandate in a nutshell. As you can see on the screen right now, I have entered our website opening page. Uh, and if you want to look at our mandate more specifically and read a bit more about it, you have a tab right here for our mandate. Where I want to draw your attention for this afternoon, because I want to make sure that we keep this to an hour uh, and not take much too much of your time uh, outside of the hour that we have afforded to us, I want to look at the resources, the workshops, and the newsletter section. 
So what I'm going to do is click and show you a few things that you can uh, have access to. If this is the first time you look, you see our website, uh, it's very easy to find ageresources.ca. And in that little corner right there under resources, if you go down, you will have the ELI tab where you will find literacy, pre-secondary, uh, secondary one. Normally it should say cycle one, like secondary one and two, but those are little things that we need to fix uh, on our website. However, the information is there. As you can see, you have secondary one and secondary two course codes right here. And if I go back, I can also show you that we have a tab for ELA as well, all right? And then you'll have secondary three, four and secondary five. For the purpose of today's uh, look at resource, we're going to go to ELI and I'm gonna go to uh, the secondary, the, 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 C, the uh, first cycle, just so that we can have a, an idea. By the way, every single course code has the same six tabs that you can see here. No, they're not all full as we speak, although I am working very hard to put material uh, in there. Um, I have been with Ikipshuk since July 2nd, so uh, I'm working very hard and uh, Michigan is helping me a whole lot but we're still, it's under, it's in progress. It's, it's under construction indefinitely because we keep updating it with uh, as, many, uh, as many new material as possible. But if you look, you will notice that the six tabs here each have their own uh, purpose. So you have the program and general documentation tab here where you'll find the, DD, the DED, the program information and so on. We have a tab for grammar and vocabulary where I would put uh, maybe worksheets or grammatical uh, notions sections that can be helpful. Learning activities and materials. As you can see, if I click on this tab, there are already, uh, there's already one learning situation that is there, okay? And it's the same for uh, all of the tabs where I could, uh, I could put something in there. Of course, we're working on uh, getting as many as we can and getting new ones. If you have some that you would like to share with the community, send them my way. They will be credited, of course, with your, uh, your hard work. You will be credited with the hard work and they will be benefiting uh, the whole community. So again, we're hoping to share and get as much as we can for the whole community to, uh, to, to reach out and get from. You also have an assessment uh, or pre-tests tab, reading resources or texts and audio video teacher contribution right here. This one I really wanna take a look at because this is a Padlet. And as you can see, there's already material uh, in this Padlet. Whichever of, the, uh, whichever of the pages you're on, whichever course number you're on, the Padlet uh, link or tab will have everyone on it, everything and everyone on it. Because it may be very uh, helpful for different levels. Uh, whatever is there can be helpful for other uh, levels and other uh, course codes, sorry. So do not uh, worry about it. It's the same page for everybody. And in our Padlet, this is the perfect way for you to contribute whatever you have that you think could be helpful to uh, the community, okay? So here, if you are a Sec 345 literacy, pre-secondary or secondary first cycle teacher, uh, all you have to do is click on the plus sign right here and then decide if you wanna upload a link uh, there, it can be a picture, it could be a document, you copy, copy it here, and you just upload it and it will appear with everything else uh, on the uh, Padlet right here. And all of this is teacher generated and available for every single one of you, okay? I encourage you to go and put it up on there if, it, if the document is too big, if you have something that is a zip file or that has 
several different files in it, you can always send them to me via email and then I can make sure I put it up on the website. Again, the Padlet is really up and running and up for you to, uh, to upkeep, but anything that you would send my way, I would put under the learning activities and materials, or if it's very specific in the grammar vocabulary or the reading resources, or even assessment tools or pretests that you may have that may be uh, interesting and you know that could be used by your fellow uh, English teachers. All right, so that's part of the re that's the resource tab in our website, and this is how you can navigate uh, the website uh, any day. Just check, look, whatever you find that's useful, we can get on there. And if you have anything that you think can be useful to others, just go ahead and send it my way or put it up yourself on the audio video teacher contribution section. In the workshop tab, you will find what is upcoming, okay? And this is covering everything that we do, Michelin and I. So you have the National Mathematics Workshop, of course. Uh, you have some webinars that are forthcoming that will be added onto the list. And you have the Après Cours link that you can uh, click on and take a look at the whole agenda. As you can see, there was a, a scroll down menu with all the dates and all the Après Cours that are scheduled. You can have access there. Um, and if you have any questions, of course, we can help you uh, navigate through those as well. The newsletter, however, will be what will give you all of the updated and brand new information. We have a monthly newsletter. Uh, what you can do to subscribe, you go to the first image right here, this one with the computer, and you subscribe and you will be asked a few little things, email address, name and last name, and that's it. You subscribe to it and you will receive notification that uh, the newsletter is ready every month. So far, we have one for September, we have written one for October, you have your November right here. And if you look, the format is very user-friendly. It's directly in the browser. And as you can see, you have an opening text. We have also the events and workshops that are upcoming for the month, okay? Now, between now and the new, uh, the new let newsletter, so there will be a few things in between that will step into the December, the month of December, because of course we, uh, we publish approximately mid month. So you can, you have here the November 23rd après cours, you have a math community après cours, December 2nd, the uh, history presentation, December 8th, and so on. Then you have other dates not to not miss important. Also, breaking news, anything new, anything specific that we want to, uh, to send out to you, we can do that in, the, in that section. We have inspirational reading and viewing, so different readings, infographics, even a little bit of riddles and puzzles to get your mind off of work. Why not once in a while? And we have a special section right here for our partners and for the resources that are available for everyone. So as you can see, the complementary educational services have put something up there. And also Giovanna has written and prepared something for you. So Riciage recommends, you will find that here. Any other document from our partners will also be uploaded in our partners section. And then the references, anything that comes from the ministry uh, that has to do with teacher competencies, info sanction, and we have our BIM section. So Stephen will be happy to see that your name is there. <laughs> your email address is there in case people need your help and your, uh, your assistance. Uh, so you have the list of available material from BIM under each of our subjects or dossiers right there. You have the SOFAD resources and we leave you with a quote, usually something inspirational. We try our very best. Another reminder to subscribe if you want. And of course, thanks to all of our partners and you can go visit their website right here at the bottom. 
Now, um, I forgot and I just noticed if we go back to uh, back to where we were a minute ago in our newsletter, I forgot to scroll down and show you that you also have access to our, uh, our archive of newsletters from last year. They may be also very, uh, very informational. They can be useful. You can find uh, different things in there as well. Uh, I was not part of Ekipshak, so I can only credit uh, Micheline from Ekipshak and all the help that she got from our partners for last year's newsletters, but they are also archived right here. So before I move on, any questions regarding resources, workshops, newsletters on our website? Yes, <clears throat> Zian has a question with regards to accessing the, uh, the resources. Okay. But I think the answer is no. <laughs> uh, the question is, is there a password to access the resources tab? Uh, no. Only for the pretests and uh, the, uh, the pretest section uh, your your consultant give give you the uh, the password. Uh, if you don't have a consultant, then you just reach out and we will give you the password. It's very simple, and it's the only password protected section of our website. Okay. If ever you don't get access by any unfortunate uh, any unfortunate uh, thing happening, just send me an email and I will unblock it. But they sh they should be available for everybody. They should not be restricted. Okay. Except so we the, we we don't have a CP uh, at the pin. Uh. Okay. Then uh, what I will do is I will write you a little uh, a little chat later, and I'll give you the password for the pre-test okay. section. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Any other questions regarding our website? Yeah, quick question, Julie. When it comes to subscribing to the newsletter, is it preferable that uh, people use their work email addresses? or does it make no difference? It should not be a problem. Uh, I don't know, Micheline, would you have something uh, specific to, uh, to suggest maybe? Um, just to let you know, ideally it would be nice that you're related to a school board and it's not for anything. It's just because it's easier in case, let's say, uh, you know, correspondence, we could get like, we'll know where you're coming from and we could get in contact who, we can't get to you we could get in contact for some with someone that could get to you so it's more that but it's all preference it's not it's not a big deal if you if you don't but we would prefer ideally this through a school board address if you don't mind and if you subscribe to the newsletter uh then you receive news you receive information regarding the new newsletter that is out but that's that's pretty much it as far as uh getting emails from us anyways, unless you want us to, of course, communicate with you uh, otherwise. Thank you, Frank, for, for that question. So we will be moving on. If anything comes up, uh, you can always put it in the chat and we will take care of that. So if we go back to uh, our agenda, we're now ready for our guided discussion section. That's where you get to speak and uh, we get to write down notes uh, regarding what you have uh, to say. And the, the discussion is guided in a sense that I would like to know first and foremost, which of the following methods you use when you plan your lessons. And of course, I'm hoping that we get many different answers and that even you may come up with something different that has not been placed on that list. But I would like to hear from you, which of the following methods do you use when you plan your lessons? Um, at New Horizons right now, we focus more on an individualized teaching set, like kind of because everyone's at different levels from sec one to sec five, all in the same classroom. So that makes it a little bit hard. We do have some group discussions when it's kind of topics that are about all levels and general kind of general knowledge. We use technology because it is online or in the classroom. And that's about it. That's what we teach. That's how we teach at the moment. I want to improve on that, but that's where we are. But there's a lot on your list. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Hi, yes. <laughs> very individualized. 
uh, because it's multiple subjects and multiple levels. So it has to be that they're very individualized. Um, what, what one, th one of the benefits of maybe being in lockdown at one point was really spending the time and energy to use a Moodle site and create Moodle sites or Moodle site with all the different courses. So I'm trying to encourage my students to use more of the technology and like go to the Moodle site first, then ask me if you've got a question or ask me where we're going with this. So that's where I am at the moment. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, um, it's video. Uh, yes. We do, we have an individualized program. I have a, most of, almost all of my students have learning disabilities. So it has to be that way. And um, I do individualize with them. We use technology, audio, video resources and occasionally media content as well. So. Excellent. Perfect. Anyone else? Okay, I don't see any more hands. Do you see any more hands, Mr. Fenshaw? All right. Well, on this particular slide, uh, I, what I hear, and I'm, I'm quite happy that I hear this, I hear from people who have an individualized setting or that have online settings only, but nonetheless go to different resources and try to try to vary the way that they use uh, their methods to, to plan their lessons. And it's really nice to hear that even in individualized settings, we get to work more and more with technology or with different media. And that is music to my ears. It's really uh, something that I really, really am happy that I hear this because we can build off of that and we can really uh, share much more uh, knowing that many people use different types of, uh, of methods. So this is very, very good news. And uh, hopefully we can get uh, to share as many uh, of these methods as we can and little tricks of the trade as well. This is good news. Thank you very much for your comments. Now, if I asked you, according to you, what are the biggest obstacles for your students to overcome? What would you have to say about this? Now, they can be any type of obstacles, personal, curriculum-based. Motivation, one for sure would be motivation. Personal motivation? Yep, the students, because once they get to adult ed, they've They've been let down so much in the past that we have to be like that savior to come in and motivate them. And sometimes they're not motivated, but the teacher is. So to find that balance of how much push do you do to motivate a student? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anything else that comes to mind as a hurdle or an obstacle? Literacy levels. Literacy levels, yes, absolutely. Because it's, it's great to have all this work, but if they can't read the instructions, you're still relying on somebody else to explain it to them and work through it. Mm -hmm. And just general learning disabilities, either identified yeah. or not identified, that are, they're with adult education for a reason, to be brutally honest. And we have a lot who have, they can't focus very well their attention span is very short. So you have to keep, you know, following them, tell them, okay, do two questions, take a break, walk around, come back, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. Anything else? We have motivation, we have learning disabilities, we have attention span uh, issues, we have literacy in, in itself as being a problem. Anything else? Uh, I want to say poverty because I have I have students who are hungry and a good number of them. So it's hard to learn on an empty stomach. Absolutely agreed. Socioeconomical and, issues are sometimes in the way. Absolutely. Yeah. And just personal personal problems with relationship problems with their families or um, um, depression medical issues. Um, so I would say those are apparent in my situation. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you very much. This mm -hmm. is absolutely uh, unfortunate, but also very true. 
Uh, anything else that we want to add to our list of obstacles? Jan, it's your turn. Yeah. Um, uh, I agree with a lot of uh, the things that you've uh, said. A lot of my students are are have difficulties, uh, not just poverty, but in, in when they're incarcerated, they don't eat as well as uh, outside. They don't sleep well because they only have these very small mattresses. There's a lot of noise in the um, in the in, in the the wings. Um, but also anxiety, I would add that to the list. Anxiety, uh, these, these people, they can handle guns and, they, they, and, and knives and, and all kinds of like violent um, situations, but put them in, a, in, a, in an exam context, in, in an exam room, or oh, they, they, they're sweating buckets, they're scared. Yep. So anxiety is... Uh, Excellent point present. that we need to keep in mind. Absolutely. Anything else before we move on to uh, our next point? Okay, so I hear anxiety, personal issues, socioeconomic problems, attention span slash learning disabilities, motivation, uh, literacy levels. And that That's a lot that we have to handle. That's a uh, definitely a lot of uh, different obstacles so imagine the very hard work that we that we achieve with our students my next question and there's the infinity sign right there in the middle of the screen because i believe that uh this should be something that is ongoing that goes uh you know and and is a never-ending uh, cycle and it is to sh the material that we want to share the experience that we can also share uh, so i'm asking two questions in one in this case is there material that you would like to share with your colleagues and on the other side of the coin is there anything you would like your colleagues to share with you now I know that we come from very different backgrounds and we teach different, uh, different socioeconomic or different uh, areas, but what do you think would be the most useful uh, to share among the community that we are? Either that you have to share with others or that you would like shared with you. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing that the biggest problem I have here is not so much material issues as human is human resources. I need another person in the class. I've got 18 students and some of them are emergent readers and writers and I'm on my own with them. And, you know, I need another body in here because I used to have an assistant years ago. I used to teach here and then I left for a good while and did other things and stuff. Went back to school and this and that and then came back. And, and years ago I had an assistant and that, I mean, I asked for an assistant after the first year because I thought this is, this is just necessary. <laughs> and luckily you got a very good um, retired teacher and we worked well together and then we really motored. So I find it's extremely difficult to teach this class with all those numbers that now I don't have 18 in a class at a given time, but I do have 15 if they're all here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it doesn't do them justice. So I need another person more than I need materials. We need materials too, but materials I can find, but it's hard to find another body. So we've used, um, so, uh, what is it called? Geez, there's so many acronyms out there. We had some volunteers in before the pandemic from the, um, uh, Quebec Literacy Council. Yeah, Western Quebec Literacy Council. You know, and that was helpful. Um, but that's that's what I find the most difficult thing. In terms of material resources, I can share a few more obscure ones that people may not know about that I found out about recently, <coughs> or maybe they do know about them, but the Northwest Territories Literacy Council, they have a lot of stuff if you look on their website, for me anyway, they're, they're very appropriate materials for a lot of what I teach and well put together and um, they're free like to download, I guess you, you can 
you know, pay for the downloading and stuff where you can actually order them. They're free for people in the territories, but outside of the territories. So they, they have for what I need for, you know, this literacy class, they have some really good stuff. That's a little bit more obscure. Um, but again, and I guess there's a few other things. I mean, I like, I like books. I, I like books a lot. I mean, and I do download stuff and I do go to websites, but I mean, I find it's criminal that these students don't have books. They don't have something that they can take home. We give them sheets and papers and send them to websites and this and that. But, you know, some of them, they really like a book. One even said to me, you know, when am I going to get my own book? You know, don't you remember as a kid going home and getting your book and bringing it home and you can look through it at home and look at the pictures and pick it up on a Saturday afternoon and so uh, anyway, okay, I'm going on and on, so I'll stop now. But the two, the main thing for me is human resources, much more than the I, material. I Thanks. did write it down. Thank you very much. However, okay. uh, if you do have material to share, please don't hesitate. And if you could put the website, that the, um, the URL for that website in the chat so that people can take a look, the Northwest uh, Territory Literacy uh, Council. Yeah, uh, maybe maybe people will go and take a look at it. I definitely yeah. wrote it down. So thank yeah, you if they can maybe just write that down because I'm not so good at all this stuff. So okay, I put if you just want to take note. It's just oh, the Northwest see, Territory okay, Literacy the, Council. Giovanna they, did it already. Okay, Giovanna thanks. Did it. Thanks. Thank you, Giovanna. Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot, Giovanna. Okay. All right. Anyone Gail, else? It's your turn. Yes, Gail. Um. I just wanted to make and say something about that, and I wish I had a magic answer about the books, but I agree with you, and I don't know if anyone has seen the video of Adele that's making the rounds where she thanks her English teacher profusely for the difference she made in her life, and she specifically said after the turns out the English teacher was there and came up on stage and so on, she said, I still have the books, so I really hear what you're saying because they can make such an impact and to have something you hold and that's your own is so meaningful. Um, and I, you know, there are different, I, I don't know if the question, is it about not having funds for purchasing books for students? Students can't afford to buy them themselves. That's what it is where they don't have the money. Like a lot of them just like they're on welfare or they're very low income and we yeah. don't have the budgets to buy. So even there's some like the Laubach, Ontario people, I, I mean, I work in Quebec, but I live in Ottawa. So I take out lots and lots of resources on my library card in Ottawa. They have a lot of teaching resources for literacy. So I haul them in here, but I, I, I have to say it, it does break my heart. I, it's heartbreaking for me to, they have like to give them some of these really good workbooks like and I'm not don't get me wrong I'm I'm a pretty versatile I would say you know dynamic teacher I don't just want to give them a workbook that they're going to sit and do that's not where I'm coming from but I want I want them to have a solid base something that they can that, you know that they can actually work in the workbooks and here you know to put a workbook in front of them and then they have to write the answers and stuff on a piece of paper like I don't know, they can't manipulate it. Like the whole kinesthetic aspect of it is gone as well. And we know that, I know I teach a lot of students with dyslexia and learning disabilities and stuff as you all do. And the whole kinesthetic part is, is important too. And you know, the color and all that, it's all gone. And you can't photocopy these because they're, you know, they're photo, they're under copyright. And um, yeah, I mean, I just find it heartbreaking to tell you the truth. Yeah. And it doesn't feel like fair or right, you know, it just, uh, anyway. So it, it is, it's a question of money, mostly. Thank you very much. I had a magic answer. I know Emily's putting digital resources yes. um, that are free. So. Yes. Thank you. Uh, your hand is up, Emily, right? Did you want to speak to this uh, sharing material, sharing? Uh, information yes i just put a whole bunch of links in the chat i will add them in the notes as well yes. um so the first one is verna you were talking about your local literacy organization and that, like that's fabulous that you have those volunteers in your classroom with you so i put a link first to literacy quebec which is um like an umbrella organization of all the literacy organizations in quebec um 
So they have local, um, that website there has like a list of the local literacy organizations throughout Quebec. So for example, uh, Diane, you've probably um, worked with um, people from YLC, the Yamaska Literacy Council in the penitentiary. They, I know they have volunteers who go it, um, to visit students and work on literacy stuff with them there. I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear what you said. With whom? The Yamaska mm -hmm. Literacy Council. I'm not sure. No, you should check them out. They're in your area. I know that they do work with students in the penitentiary. They're great. They're excellent yeah. people. Oh, um, okay. Thank but you. so otherwise, other literacy organizations there. Also, Verna, you were talking about books. So I, I understand now that you're talking more specifically about workbooks. Um, so ABC Literacy has a whole bunch of um, literacy resources that you can access for free. But if we're talking about books as in novels, any Quebec resident can subscribe to the Bibliothèque Archive Nationale for free to their online services. And they have a whole, uh, whole, whole lot of novels and audiobooks as well uh, that people can access digitally on their phones. Thank you very much, Emily. Uh, I also, I've started putting a list of novels together. The other day, somebody asked me about uh, more contemporary novels, young adult novels that I could, uh, I could re recommend. So I started putting a few uh, of these together and that list is uh, almost, I'm almost done with it. Although, I mean, we could add to it every single day, uh, but I do, I will have a few uh, suggestions that I can uh, then send everybody's way. I can just send it to your email. If you're interested, there are uh, novels that it can be borrowed or maybe bought if you're very, very lucky. Uh, and also a few online resources that you can, you can work with, with that are pertinent to that particular book, for example. So I will have a few of those. And of course, as all of this happens and you get right ideas or you get questions or whatever, please do not hesitate to reach out. Uh, that's exactly what we're here for. And there's something good about the fact that we're not meeting in person, okay? And that is that these, these rooms that we're sharing together makes it so that people from all corners of the province can talk and share ideas and share concerns and resources. So albeit, not the most extraordinary thing right now to be to have to deal with uh, the rem, you know the remainders of the pandemic and everything. There's still this very good thing that comes out of it, which is the networking that we uh, that we can do and the people that we can reach out to that would we would probably not see if we were meeting in person because sometimes you know there's just too many kilometers between. Uh, between two colleagues. So this is a good thing. And I hope that we'll, we'll get to use that, uh, that, op that option again in the future. Um, anyone else would like to share something or, or maybe uh, ask for or express some kind of concern? Yes, Sarah. Um, I think it'd be interesting if we could share like, um, kind of the like writing workshops to really doesn't really matter just the basics of writing because especially when you have individualized and I'm kind of getting the impression that a lot of us do we have our students for longer than three months right and so you teach right. kind of paragraph writing or whatever in one way and then you need another way to do it um to kind of mix things up and just like little short mini I call them like writing workshops mm -hmm. kind of like short little mini ones I have some but I'm you know, I have the same students that I had last year. I'm trying to find I have another several. way to do it. I, I'm glad you're asking because I have several. I have access to several of those. And I will definitely uh, get, get, uh, get to that. And I will make sure that, uh, that they are put up on the website and you can get them from there. Uh, I am always on the lookout for material like that. You know, sometimes we think we're the only ones needing the basic the very basic information, the very basic uh, courses or structures or whatever, do not feel like you're the only one. It 
you'd be surprised how many people would uh, would love to have access to those resources. So that's one of the things that I can help you with that definitely. And Emily also and Giovanna also are there for anything digital that, that they can help you with. So you can reach out to them as well, uh, or just you know reach out to your pedagogical consultant and they know where to, uh, where to send that request. And uh, so do not hesitate. And yes, I am on that as well. I'm putting together a few things. So hopefully they can be helpful for you as well, Sarah. Thank you very much for your comment. That's good news, thank you. Um, there is a comment, uh, just to let you know, Julie, there's a yes, comment please. from Diane that is, yes. she's looking for multicultural authors. Also in multicultural authors. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you, yeah. Dian. And, and another thing, maybe I would just like to add there is a website that they offer grants. You know, I put one, you know, to BPC. There's a lot of places you could apply for grants if you want. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Did you share that in the in the chat? Super excellent. All right. So in next we have on our agenda the service offers that uh, that will be sent out to you guys uh, through email it will be a google form you know very straightforward but there will be on there all the possible things that we can do for you and, and with you and you'll have you can you know check a few boxes you could even come up with something that's not on the list that you can think of the service offers will be the way that the equip shock pedagogical will uh, we'll make sure to keep everything uh, in, uh, in check as far as what you are sending us and what you require, what you need, what your requests are. So in a few days, this, uh, this form will get to you and, and to your PEB consultants, of course. And don't hesitate, just write back to us, use that service offer uh, request and send it our way. And you can send a few even, I mean, you can think of something in January and just go grab that one, fill another one and send it to us. And we will keep everything in a file, very secure in a file and make sure that we respond to uh, the needs that are there. Mishtin, did you have something else you wanted to add before I move on to uh, the working groups? Uh, the form is done, just to let you know. Yay, <laughs> the feedback form. Super. So you'll have a feedback form in the chat that will be shared in a few minutes. Uh, please take a minute to write, uh, write to us, write your feedback to this particular uh, APRECO, but also in there you'll have room to write uh, what your needs are. Okay, so do not hesitate. You can write as many as you need. There is no problem. We will take, and if there's no more room, then just write an email and send it our way. We will be glad to, to read everything and respond to as many as we can. Now, um, I wanted to also add that there is a, an opportunity for us to offer, um, to offer sessions for people to work together, whether they want to create uh, uh, learning and evaluation situations or uh, pretests or worksheets or you know little books or work on material for a specific level. Uh, as I was saying earlier, the fact that we are not able to meet in person also adds to the uh, it adds to the fact the fun of meeting people from outside of our uh, area and have access to their great minds. So if there's anything that you would like to do in terms of working in a group a team to build material or uh, anything that comes to mind that could be done in a group. We do have uh, a, we have a special room. We can arrange for something to be done. We can help you with that as well. So if you want, put it in, the, in your feedback form uh, that you would like to work in, in a group uh, and uh, what you would like to do in that group. And maybe if the demand is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, strong enough, then we can prioritize that one and, and see what we can do. As far as I'm concerned, I am done. I am uh, respecting uh, my time. I wanted you to not to spend too much time, uh, you know, outside of your, your, uh, your work day and right before your supper and whatever, your family, 
uh, family time. So I'm leaving you with my contact information. Uh, that is, don't forget the .ext. Otherwise, it will not get to me. Uh, you can also write directly in the chat if you have a question. We uh, before we close the meeting, uh, it will be in there and it will be uh, recorded, if you will. Again, so many thanks for being here today and showing up in such uh, such a high number. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, and please do uh, look out for another invitation in the new year for another uh, ELI, ELA, après cours. Thank you very much again. Enjoy your evening. Bye.